What's going on, Gem and Knights? It's your boy, Gem Mint, back with another statue unboxing and review. We just got in the brand new Sideshow Collectibles Mystique exclusive premium format, number 148 out of 600 checking in. Stay tuned for the unboxing and the review. All right, guys, so a uh, pretty small sh uh, shipper box here for this Mystique. Um, let's just crack it open. All right, so here's the art box. We have the uh, picture of the statue kind of with like a stylized look. And uh, the rest of the box has kind of like a art deco Charlie's Angels type of vibe. But pretty clean white box, Mystique, premium format on the front, and the same logo on the top. All right, so here is the inside of the styrofoam box. Here's Mystique's body. I guess she has a piece that clips on the front. Hmm. All right. Here's the base, part of Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Pretty cool little base here. Here goes your bottom of the base. All right, one of the arms with her big handgun. Here's the other arm with the other gun. This was like must be the front of her dress or whatever. And here is the exclusive arm, the X-23 Morph arm, which to me is really the selling point of the piece. But wow, that looks really shitty. Look at that. What is the deal with that, yo? Are you seeing that? Hmm. Then we have the portrait. All right, so we got the base down on the turntable. It's a pretty basic flat base, and we'll get Mystique on it now. All right, she fits in there nice and good. Get her little loincloth going there. Let's get the two regular hands in there. for the portrait. All right, there you go. Pretty simple assembly. She looks good, man. All right, so let's take a look. Mystique is 19 inches tall. And with the guns, she's about 13, 14 inches wide. Not very deep, maybe about 10, 11 inches. So definitely will fit in the Besta. I think uh, it's going to complement the X-Men wall well. 
So the story about this piece for me is that um, there's two mystiques that are out, right? You have the Sideshow one and then the XM Studios one. Now, I did like the XM Studios one better. I got to be honest. I liked the sculpt better, the pose. I liked how the bass wasn't just a flat bass like this. Like, it had some depth to it. But this was shipping really soon, so I pre-ordered it, like, last month. And I really like the uh, exclusive for this piece. Um, the XM Studios piece doesn't have a look that showcases her power, right? And her power is the ability to... Um, to shapeshift into other characters. So that and the fact that this piece was maybe $550 with the shipping and the XM Studios one might have costed me close to $1,000 with shipping, maybe maybe less, maybe not eight, 900. But there was a big price difference, a big difference in the wait time and I really do like the exclusive on this piece. However, my exclusive fist seems to have not had QC, uh, not have been QC'd. There was no quality control, and it looks like there's a bunch of paint or whatever holding the claws together. But nevertheless, um, I think she's going to look good on the X-Men wall. I don't really know where I'm going to put her yet. But... Um, Let's do a quick little breakdown on Mystique, and then we'll do uh, an in-depth review. So Mystique, uh, her real name is Raven Darkholm. She is a mutant. Like I mentioned, her uh, mutant ability is to shapeshift into other characters. She is also the mother of the X-Men Nightcrawler and stepmother to, or foster mother to uh, the X-Men Rogue. She was an evil mutant most of the time, and um, she's about 100 years old. She has a lot of history with Wolverine. They go back, and she um, she has a rocky relationship with Rogue, man. She's a, a big reason why Rogue uh, was evil when she first appeared in Avengers 10, why she ended up killing Carol Danvers and uh, permanently absorbing her powers. Her first appearance is kind of tricky. There's three issues. Luckily, it's Miss Marvel 16, which is her first cameo appearance on the last page. 17, which is her first full appearance, but as Nick Fury. And uh, 18 is her real first full appearance. That's the money book. Uh, I believe uh, she was created by Chris Claremont, and it was 1974, I believe. Um, she was always kind of a lower tier villain, but for whatever reason, Brian Singer and company for the Fox X-Men movies decided to, uh, decided to make her a main character, and she became really popular and a really uh, strong focus in the X-Men movies. Uh, which was always a weird choice, but... I don't know. It was alright. I always wish they kind of had a better rogue in those movies. So let's do a quick little review. Uh, I really do like the base. I think the rock, rubble, it looks good. And it has a, a couple of different colors in there. It's got like a red brick kind of color. Uh, mixed with like a grayish kind of concrete. I like the bronze look of the uh, X-Men school logo. And actually, it, it has what looks like a juggernaut fist uh, indentation. Like, he punched that, and now Mystique is over there walking on it. So maybe the base will be a good companion with the juggernaut maquette that's coming out. An interesting detail that I just never really noticed is she has, like, uh, wood heels on her on her shoes. That's pretty interesting. The white parts of her costume look like a... Like a patent leather latex kind of look, man. Like a shinier type of paint compared to her skin, which is um, just obviously blue. She has her holsters for her guns. I wasn't a big fan of these guns, to be honest with you. I always felt like these are some big-ass handguns with these huge silencers on them. I almost wish they didn't have the silencers, to be honest. You know, so she's got those holsters. They go up into her belt that has her uh, tr trademark skulls on there. It looks all right. The skull looks okay. Um, I think the details in her back look good. 
You can see some good sculpting in there. The seams where the arms, uh, the gloves, you know, connect and everything, I don't know, they look a little rough to me. Up to her portrait, I think her portrait looks good. It always kind of reminded me of like Uma Thurman. Like all the recent female sideshow pieces like the Poison Ivy, uh, this one, they all kind of had like the same vibe to it. I don't know, maybe it was the same sculptor. And then she has the short uh, bob haircut, which a lot of the collectors wanted the exclusive to be a long hair portrait. I definitely prefer the X-23 switch out. But again, mine just looks ugly as hell, man. Like, what is even wrong with it? It looks like... It looks like just glue. But it looks really bad. The claws, though, look really good. They're really long. It, it looks good. I don't know. I might just live with the paint. Who knows? Or with the glue, I should say. So it looks like a good companion with, you know, the new X-Men stuff, the Wolverine. I did pass on the Magneto because I have um, the Magneto on Throne. But it'll pair up well, I'm sure, with Juggernaut, with Cable that they're going to have coming out. Um, do they show any other X-Men pieces? Emma Frost, Rogue. Um, I think that's it. So I guess that's really all for Mystique. I mean, this is a piece that I was just kind of a filler piece to go in with the others and to build the X-Men wall. You know, I don't know if it's going to be a long life keeper, but it's straight. It looks nice. Let's go ahead and get it up in uh, the display somewhere. All right, guys, that is the unboxing and review of the Sideshow Collectibles Mystique Premium Format Exclusive. Let me know what you thought about the piece in the comments below. Is this a hard pass? Are you picking it up? And uh, what future X-Men pieces are you looking forward to from uh, Sideshow? Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content. It ain't a statue every day, but we try to get in as many as we can. But we always have uh, good quality stuff, so make sure to sub it up. Make sure to hit the like on the way out, and stay minty fresh. Peace.